Good evening, Oasis Baptist Church. What a joy and honor to be back together on our online service as unto the Lord. God is good. My name is Pastor Anderson, and we praise the Lord that you was able to join with us today in God's holy word. Amen. I would like you to hit the like button and subscribe button on the bottom, amen, and tell us how you're enjoying the services as unto the Lord, amen. And I hope everyone had a great week in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I also want to thank our responders and our doctors for the great job they're doing, amen, in the community and around the country in the Lord. Well, those have your Bibles this afternoon. Turn me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7. The Bible says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Let us pray as unto the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you once again for another opportunity, Lord, to bow before your throne, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to open your holy word. I pray, Lord, that your word will go forth, Lord, and touch hearts, encourage your people, save them by the grace of God, Lord, that those that be saved, Father, strengthen those, Lord, and be strengthened, Lord. Lord, I pray for those that are going through some tough times, Lord, Lord, that you just have a way in your life to form, Father. We glorify you and magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to look this afternoon in St. Corinthians chapter 5 on the subject called faith. Amen. I think this is so important for the child of God uh, in the hour we live in and as a Christian, amen, to live a life of faith. Amen. I think about the saints of old, amen how they uh, serve the Lord and how they walk with the Lord in the church and in the mission fields and different places. They was a people of faith, amen, in the Lord. Child of God, we got to realize this afternoon that faith is part of the Christian life, amen. If you're going to live for Jesus and serve Jesus, amen, faith is going to be part of your life, amen. I want to show you some things this afternoon, amen, that number one, that we're saved by faith, amen. In order for a man to really have faith, amen, he has to come to the knowledge of his condition, amen, about sin, amen, and be saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ alone, plus nothing, minus nothing, and the Lord. Number two, we must live by faith, amen. Every day of our lives, as a child of God, we must live by faith, amen. And I tell you that the more you walk with God and live for God, it's going to take faith, amen. It's going to take faith in this hour we're in. It's going to take faith to, for you to, to get where you're trying to go for the Lord. It's going to take faith in the Lord. Number three, we are to grow in our faith. Amen. Uh, the scriptures teach us to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I believe that every born-again believer that's saved and been baptized into the local body of Christ. Amen. Ought to be growing and expanding and developing their life for Christ, amen, for the glory of God. I think there was a, a famous scripture that was read by Martin Luther, uh, the just shall live by faith, amen. And I believe that every born-again believer ought to live their life in that manner in the Lord. But we must ask ourselves a question this afternoon. What is true, a true definition of faith, amen? How do we actually obtain this matter, amen? Faith is a belief or a trust or loyal to a creed or religion. Read it again. Faith is belief, trust, or loyalty to a creed or religion. I want you to notice something here in Hebrews chapter 11. We'll be turning there. We'll go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 again. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1. The Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Just for example, like sitting in a chair, there's faith that you have that you won't fall. When you sit in a chair in your home or, or in a chair at the church house, amen, or, or at the doctor's office, you have faith or confidence that that chair will not fall. Faith is simply this, child of God. Faith is taking God and his word. That's, that's what it's all about. It's about you believing in confidence 
what the word of God says and taking it what it says. That's what it means. This child down three ways, amen. Number one, we must exercise our faith. Uh, you can tell me all day long you got faith in Jesus Christ. But if you don't exercise your faith, it will never be used for the glory and honor of God. And I tell you that uh, even in this pandemic, amen, uh, people have a lot of things going on. And I believe that we ought to be moving our bodies and moving our hearts and minds and soul, amen. But I tell you, as a believer, we must exercise our faith, amen. And I know some of us are, a lot of us are in the home, amen, and we're, and we're not in church, amen. We're still at home right now uh, preparing and, and getting ready to go back into the churches, amen. But I tell you, even in your homes, you must exercise your faith in Christ, amen. Number two, we must walk in faith, amen. And I tell you, that's important, amen, that every day of your Christian life that you walk in faith. Number three, we ought to develop our faith, amen. I'm telling you, we as a believer got to do that. We have to continue uh, striving and getting better and, and working and, and critiquing the things that God has given us, amen, that craft he gave us, amen, and work on it, amen. The Bible tells us to stir up the gift, amen. And I tell you, God has given the church gifts for the Lord, and we have to use them for the glory and honor of God. Now we must ask our question this morning, afternoon, child of God, how is your faith, saints, as I ask the question this evening, how is your faith saints this evening, amen? Is it high or is it low? We must realize that faith is necessary for the believer, amen. And I believe faith is also necessary for a man to be saved, amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Acts 16. Faith is necessary for a child of God, amen, but also for a sinner. Acts 16, look at verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. We see that it was faith in Christ. He believed and was saved by the grace of God. He had to exercise his faith, amen. He had to believe in the gospel, amen, that was given to him, amen, and receive it. It's believing and receiving what Christ has given us in the Lord. And this is how you exercise your faith, amen. That's how you do it, amen. You have to believe it, they receive it into the Lord. Amen. Number two, the nature of the faith. And I believe there's two types of this matter regarding this matter of the nature of faith. We find that we find there is the regarding salvation. Amen. There's a the nature of faith. Amen. Number one, there's, the, there's a head belief. Amen. There's the acknowledgement. Amen. What's going on. There's the acknowledgement going on or have the understanding. A man must hear the gospel Romans 10, 9, but at the same time, he must understand the gospel, amen. It must be clear. It must be clear that he can understand it, but he can receive it, amen. That man must understand about Jesus Christ generally to accept God's word, amen. Just like preaching or teaching or, or passing out a gospel tract, it must be clear understanding for that man to receive it, amen. Number two, there's a heart belief, amen, about the Lord. Church, faith that comes from the heart causes a man to act in faith or be proactive. Let me say it again. Faith that comes from the heart causes a man to act in faith or be proactive. In other words, he heard the gospel, he understood it. Now his heart believes in a man, now he moves toward the gospel. He moves to Christ. He moves toward Jesus Christ, amen. Notice Acts 16 again, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thy shall be saved. If you look above the verses of there, in the beginning of the verses from 25 on down to 29, we see that Paul and Saul was in jail, amen, and as they begin to shout the gospel, they moved what they heard, amen. They, they responded, amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thy shall be saved. Acts 16, 31. For example, a sick man has a bottle of medicine. He will act on his belief and actually swallow the medicine. Read it again. For example, a sick man has a bottle of medicine. He will act on his belief and actually swallow the medicine. This has been proactive. He has the medicine. He understands the condition he's in. He knows he's sick. 
He knows he needs medicine. He has the medicine. So he swallows it. He's proactive, amen. And this is how true faith is believing to the extent of receiving Christ. Look at 1 John, John, chapter, John chapter 1. Look at John chapter 1. John's gospel chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse number 12. Notice what it says here. But as many receive, but as many have received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. They received power and became the sons of God. Amen. True faith is believing or understanding to the extent of receiving. He's proactive, amen. Man must embrace Christ and whom he believes, amen. It's more than knowing he just died. It's more than just coming to the house of God. It's more than just being baptized. It's an understanding and a heart belief of a receiving him, being proactive that Christ can save me and change my life, amen. The gospel is responding, amen, what Christ says to us, amen. Number three, the source of our faith, amen. The source of faith. Faith is a divine, has a divine side, amen. Look at me in Romans chapter 12. Faith has a divine side. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, when you get there. Romans chapter 12. Let's look at verse number 3. It says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Let's read it again. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you, I think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Paul goes here to tell us that he has given man a measure of faith. Other words we're saying, child of God, today is to use, learn to use the faith Christ has given you. That measurement that he's given you, learn to use it. That gift that he's given you, that ability he's given you, that proactive you have that he's given you in faith, amen. Learn to work what you have, amen. Other words, use the portion of faith the Holy Spirit allows you to use, amen, I have, amen. As the Holy Spirit begins to work on you and teach you and guide you and lead you, use the faith that Christ has given you, amen. Amen? Or exercise your faith in the way God has told you to do, amen? You exercise the faith that the Holy Spirit has given you and use it for the ability that God has given you, amen? Don't try to do something else like somebody else. The Bible teaches us clearly, he that can power himself to others or is not wise. Good scripture, amen. What Paul is saying here, our ability to receive faith, amen. Use the ability that we can receive faith, amen. Everyone don't have the same measurement of faith, amen. Everybody can't climb a mountain. Everybody cannot climb Mount, can't climb Mount Everest, amen. But there are some things you can do for the glory of God, amen. And use the faith that he's given you. Notice Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read again. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we sit and listen to preaching and teaching of God's word, the greater our faith grows or develops. Amen. Let's read it again. As we sit and listen to preaching and teaching of God's word, the greater our faith grows or develops, amen. Let me encourage you this, this, this afternoon. When you do not attend the online services, and when you don't attend the house of God when the doors are open, amen, and when you don't get in your Bible and read God's word, amen, when you, when you publicly and, and right out rebel against getting around God's word, your faith that you have inside of you cannot grow, it cannot develop, it cannot spring up 
Yep. Like a flower, man. And I tell you, unless you're around the word of God, your faith will not grow. Look at verse 17 again. So then faith cometh by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. Let me encourage you, saints. It is your responsibility as a believer, as a Christian, to read God's word. To read God's word. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. A good verse of scripture we can read today. Look at verse 1 Peter 2. 2. As newborn babes desire to send us from the book of the word that they may grow thereby. That's important. That we as God's people read God's word. Number two. Listen to preaching or your preaching. It's important that you have a preacher, amen. It's important that you have a preacher, amen, to feed you God's holy word. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Everybody needs to be a, have a preacher. Everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs to be a church member, amen. And I tell you, it's important that you have a preacher that feeds you the word of God every week, amen. Or God has teachers in the local church, Sunday school teacher, ministers, amen, that feed you the living word of God, amen. Number three, when God's house open up, be in God's house around the things of God. You see, a lot of times, even this pandemic has happened and men, men are home. But when the church door was open, some stayed home and, and just skipped service here, skipped the Wednesday night, skipped the service here, skipped the service there. It's your responsibility as a believer to be around the word of God and the things of God. Why is that important? Why is it important that we read God's word? Why is it important we listen to preaching or preaching? Why is it important we go to the house of God or around the things of God? online service and other things. Why is that important? In order to build up your faith, you must have the word. Faith can't grow if you do not be around the word. To those who choose not to be around God's word, I believe there's some things that happen to that man or woman that refuses to be around God's word. We understand, number one, this rebellion. We understand that when a man chooses, a woman chooses to not be around the word of God, not to be a church member of a local church, they're in rebellion. But I believe there are some things that happen to that man and woman that when they refuse to be around God's word, they will spiritually dry up. They will spiritually dry up, amen. Their desires for God to get low, amen. They'll begin to fall in some, some great, horrible sins, amen. They'll be, they will have no direction. They have no, no spiritual discernment about which way to go right or left or make right choices, amen. All because they're not around the word of God and they dried up. Number two, they have weak faith. You wonder why a lot of individuals that are saved have weak faith. They don't have strong faith. They don't have powerful faith. They don't have faith that that is energized, that's causing other people to be around them and excited about God and about the church, about the word of God. Faith is weak. Number three, they'll walk in unbelief. They'll continue to live in unbelief and doubt God. They don't, they don't, they don't expect big things from God. All because they don't spend time in God's word and they don't walk with God in man. We must make a spiritual life decision. It's our priorities in life must be about spirituality. So if a man does not see that his spiritual life is top priority, there are some things that take place in his life. If your spiritual life is not the priority of life, amen, you can't guide your family. You can't lead your family in the ways God said it, man. You can't lead your children, your wife, your husband, man. And I tell you, you can't be the woman of God, the man of God, the child of God, all because you don't have a spiritual life in God, amen. Number two, if our priority is not spiritually, our personal life will be messed up. Every decision we make will not be on target like it's supposed to 
All because our priority is not about life with God. Number three, we must make a priority as a church body to be spiritual. Every born again believer that is saved by the grace of God and the body of Christ must see the value of being spiritual this priority. This is top priority. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. When you get there, look at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all your things shall be added unto you. That's important. Seek God first, and everything else will fall in place. Amen. And lastly, this afternoon, we must live by the principles of faith. Amen. That's what we mean. We should live our lives and by faith every day of our life. Amen. Every day we get out of our beds. Amen. Every day we go about our daily affairs, that our life should be a life of faith. Amen. Just as it's important to go buy milk and eggs at the store, faith should be so much important for God's people every day. Let me say it again. Just as it's important to go buy milk and eggs at the store every day, or when you go to the store, faith should be important to, for God's people every day. It should be important. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 as we begin to close. This is all important. Verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let us turn back to live by faith. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, we ask you to guide us today. We ask you, Lord, that we'll turn our hearts back to you, Father. That we'll be a people of faith, Father. That we'll glorify your name, Father. Father, there's many, Lord, that are stressed out, tired, around the race. And Father, I pray today, Lord, that you will revive them, Lord, that you encourage them, Father. That they're always going to make it through this world and work through this condition we're in, Father. We're going to have to go back to Christ. We're going to be a people of faith, live by faith, Father, and give you glory and honor. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen.